down the bitch gang. Yay. Uh, five on the floor. Ride for my dogs. Where is the thing? You can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, wearing bubble frogs. Just like Buckley said, you in trouble, y'all. Check the floor plan. Got an all band. Y'all seen the block. Stop the one hand. And pack with trust. It's power, have the guts. We here to bring the heat. Y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome to the first preseason postgame edition of Five on the Floor. I am your host, Greg Sylvander. Today's floor plan, tonight's floor plan, we're going to dissect the 113-109 Miami Heat victory at the Kasaya Center. Uh, tonight over the Charlotte Hornets preseason game one lots to unpack from this game because it was a fun one it was a close one there were some clutch plays there was some fun stuff from some rooks that we're going to talk about and some vets so lots to get into uh in addition to the floor plan want to introduce uh who we have on our show today and that is Alex Toledo follow him at Tropical Blanket we also have Eternal um, you can find him on our playback channel. He is uh, always uh, one you can find there, but also he's on Twitter as well. And then for his maiden voyage on Five on the Floor, we have Matt Hannafan. Welcome to the show. Follow him on Twitter as well because dude is a wealth of knowledge. Um, we are happy to have him on the program as it relates to the game of basketball. But before we dive into basketball, and trust me, I want to talk basketball. We got to shout out the official post-game sponsor for this entire Miami Heat season, for the 2023-24 Miami Heat season, and that is A, Aggressive Insurance, the insurance broker agency that's been servicing South Florida for over 16 years, offering auto insurance, retirement programs, condo insurance, homeowners insurance, free notary service to all clients. They represent the leading insurance carriers all throughout South Florida. So if you have a bad driving record, no problem. No driver is refused. Free phone quotes. The website is insurancebylanette.com. So remember that, but also 954-581-8800. Again, that's A, Aggressive Insurance, 954-581-8800, insurancebylanette.com. Okay, fellas. So that was fun. Lots to talk about. Tyler Hero was uh, comfortable on offense, if inefficient. Bam Adebayo looks sharp. But let's cut to the chase. Jaime Jaquez was the the talk of the night. Um, Just in terms of the way he looked, the things he did down the stretch, I thought he was just confident beyond measure. Uh, Looked like he belonged physically in terms of that. He didn't stand out as the scrawny rookie on the court, that the speed of the game was was impacting him. I was pleasantly surprised by more than Jaime Jaquez, but Jaime Jaquez Jr. is where we start. And Matt, as it is your maiden voyage on the program, want to go to you for first. As we talk about this game, we're going to get to everybody, but we're starting with um, Jaime Jaquez Jr., Talk about what you saw from this dude coming off the bench, being super aggressive, and uh, just your thoughts on his game. Again, it's preseason game one. It's against Charlotte. Let's temper expectations, but it was positive stuff. What did you see? I mean, he was remarkably fluid. He never looked sped up. He was going at his own pace. Um, The footwork, I think, is the one that stood out to me the most, where his footwork in the low post, um, he was getting to his spots, and he was – pump faking dudes and he was uh creating angles for himself at and around the rim um but also like defensively i want to shout out like defensively like what's going to get talked about again is his offense and understandably so and how he how he was making every single right decision whenever he had the ball in his hands but i mean defensively like again this guy was an all pack 12 defender and he was staying in front of every single dude that was going up against him like late in that fourth quarter he was guarding brandon miller really well i mean brandon did hit a couple of shots on him but that's what the number that's what top three picks do like he was doing a really good job staying in front of guys like he stayed in front of terry on a couple of possessions throughout the game like he he showed that lateral quickness and that lateral foot speed that i don't think many people expected out of him uh 
out of UCLA because people question his athleticism and not really just his vertical athleticism, athleticism, but his horizontal athleticism and his lateral athleticism. And I thought he did a really good job displaying that tonight. And just his instincts really stood out to me on that end of the floor. Hooper, certified Hooper. Eternal, I come to you next because when we were on playback, just for context for our podcast listeners, we watched this game on playback. You should come on playback TV and check it out uh, so you can watch the game with us. We kind of comment, chop it up while we watch, commentate about the game. So definitely check that out. Um, Eternal was loving Jaime Jaquez's game. We all understood why, particularly some of the stuff he did late. Uh, What jumped out? for you most and i know you've been on since all summer just for context also for our listeners uh eternal friend of the program here has been on jaime jaquez and nico jovic as being guys that are significant young players that can eventually grow to be real contributors and jaime jaquez is kind of uh making him look like he he was on to something what did you like most Man, I, you know, the biggest thing to me is how how many ways can you impact the game of basketball? And I think what really stood out, like Matt said, like you said earlier, um, he just looks so comfortable out there. And I think a lot of that had to do with a lot of the the L.A. runs that he had with Paul George and a lot of NBA stars coming out there doing the summer, playing ball with them and kind of being able to watch them up close. Um and you kind of seeing it translate to his game on a college basketball court. And you saw a little bit of it um, during summer league. And, you know, he's been getting a lot of raving reviews from Jimmy, from Coach Spo, and a lot of them um, doing training camp. And so, you know, seeing that tonight in live game action, right? Like we all have the same opinion. Like, okay, so we hear all these things. So what can we see doing live game action? I think it just jumped off immediately, jumped off the board, like his his – ability to process the game of basketball and being able to make the right play. He had a couple of turnovers, but um, you could tell that his vision, his thought process was in the right place. Um, And just his activity. I mean, we looked at the stat, you know, stat sheet after the game and was like, that's it. That's all he got because he just felt like he was everywhere on the court, both uh, offensively and defensively. So to me, the biggest thing that really jumped out to me was just his high basketball IQ. Yeah, that it really, and the intuitive Hooper stuff. I don't even really know what we can call it. There's lots of names for it. You could just see it with certain guys and and you saw it with him for sure. I don't want to just skip over Tyler and Bam and Josh. Welcome back, Josh Richardson. It was nice to see Josh Richardson back in a heat Jersey. Uh, The pregame routine where Bam Adebayo is lifted up off the court that used to take place with Udonis Haslam apparently took place, um, with uh with jay rich and bam uh shout out to heat versus the world i think they were the ones who who tweeted that out just so i credit everyone um alex i want you to get your jaime jaquez thoughts in but we've gone jaime jaquez heavy at the beginning of this episode so uh yeah feel free to jump in on there but start let, let's just the whole, entire starting five because they're kind of guys we we know are going to be in the rotation and Josh, Bam, Tyler, who I mentioned, Kyle Lowry and Kevin Love. Uh, What were your thoughts overall from the starters? I mean, honestly, Josh was definitely um, the thing to talk about from the starters. I mean, Tyler looked comfortable. Like you said, it's not like he had the most efficient shooting night, but we already expect him to come out firing this season and we know what he can do. Um, I think he's going to have, you know, he's, he's going to have a great year, but, you know, just having Josh back and seeing the stuff he can do, right? It was, you know, a limited amount of playing time. He only played 21 minutes, but in those 21 minutes showed you why I think he's such a clean fit for this Heat team and the role that he's going to be playing in. I know we were talking about it on playback, but like nothing spectacular when you look at the stat line again, you know, not representative of the total minutes he'll probably probably be playing during the season, but seven points, four rebounds, three assists, one steal, you know, just kind of doing a little bit of everything here and there on the defensive end, on the offensive end, we again, we talked about it on playback. He just looks more comfortable with the ball in his hands. And I think, you know, like it, the way that he moves with the ball in his hands and the way that he's making quicker decisions um, than he did when he used to have the ball in his hands the first time around, it's, it's what you would expect from a guy who's, you know, made his way around the league and, and 
has come back full circle. I just think, um, you know, he's more poised. The way that he, uh, it feels like night and day from some of the stuff that people were complaining about with him when he was here the first time, where he would make some of these the kind of boneheaded decisions with the ball. Very and true. now that there isn't so much pressure on him when, like, the the foundations of the team are are, are there, Jimmy, Bam, and Tyler, I think he's just going to fit into that role so nicely. And and you saw it tonight. Like, he he gives you a little bit going to the rim, a little bit in the mid-range, can hit the open three, and great size to guard one through three. And, you know, that's easily what stood out to me from the starters. It's just cool to have him back because it's, it's a perfect fit. And Hakez, like, uh, unbelievable, man. Unbelievable first game unbelievable debut like he did not look like a rookie playing in his first preseason game out there not even a little bit and it's just hard to say something different than when you when you guys said at this point because yeah. it's pretty like it, it's true though like he looks like a natural hooper he's playing at his own pace does not look sped up by the game at all and like yeah he's playing against the teams with you know mostly young guys but he had that one play where you know he made gordon hayward look stupid with all the the pivots and up fakes and all that Beautiful like footwork it's incredible. He's natural out there. And, you know, he had like a couple of passes that he whiffed, but I just thought like the way that he gets to it, it's like he is a natural shot creator and he was making pretty good reads. Some of it is more like timing and, and speed of making the reads, which obviously is going to come with, with the reps, but like, it's all about, you know, you want, you want to see these guys stand out in these preseason games. And like Jovic was cool, but Hakez was the standout tonight. Hakez is the guy who like, Look, if he can give you this sort of shot creation and somewhat rim pressure, you know, being able to make an open three, and he looks pretty good defensively, like Matt said, like, you know, and, and again, we talked about this on playback as well. He was dealing with those ankle injuries towards the end there at UCLA, and it's like, you know, maybe he's more athletic than was given credit for. Like, he made you, like, if you're Spo, you're looking at tonight's game and the way that he played, and you're like, okay, this guy's making me think, like, do I have to put him in the rotation? And I, I don't think it's that crazy to say. Like, I know it's one preseason game. I agree. I, I was that impressed by it. I, I thought, like, the way that he flowed into his game while also, um, like, fitting into what the Heat are trying to do was really impressive because he, he did not pound the ball. He was making quick decisions, getting to his spots, making the passes. He wasn't just trying to get up a shot every time. He was just reading the game and playing. Like, it was all... Very natural. And then, of course, the other guy that really stood out was Cole Swider. I mean, just fourth quarter killer. All his points in the fourth quarter. Um, they apparently grow Duncan Robinson's on trees. They do. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. But first. All right. Welcome back. We are going to introduce a new segment on Five on the Floor specific to our postgame shows. And that is our Rock Gamer of the Night. You need to head over to Miami's first gaming lounge, Rock Esports Center, to eat, drink, and play all day. Host your next birthday party with them. Located at 15305 South Dixie Highway in Palmetto Bay, they have a 5,500-square-foot state-of-the-art center equipped with high-end power uh, of industry titans, Corsair, and Origin PC. Play all day passes available for 25 bucks. professional-level gaming at the most affordable price in town. You got to use the code 5RSN for $5 off your first purchase of over 20 bucks. Join them for their watching their watching gaming party starting on October 27th. Again, that's Rock Esports Center. Check them out. Use that code 5RSN for 5 bucks off your first purchase over $20. And the Rock Gamer of the Night, Alex almost spoiled it before the segment, but that's okay. Because it uh, it queued it up nicely. Cole Swider, y'all. What is happening here? So this is how I pictured this. Um, my son plays a game called, I think it's called Jurassic World Evolution on PS4. And essentially you continue to like make these hybrid dinosaurs and you can just mix up the DNA of all these different dinosaurs and you release them out into the wild, right? That's what happens in the game as you play it and you advance and keep going. That's kind of what the heat is starting to do with these shooters, y'all. Like they just go into the lab and they mix some stuff up and all of a sudden they release them out and Buddy comes out. Matt, I'm coming back to you with 17 in the fourth quarter, just giving us Duncan Robinson flashbacks. What stood out most and don't just say shooting. 
Tell us about Cole Swider. <laughs> well, it, like I've talked about this with Eternal on playback before and how his shot form is so like it's the same every single time, whether it's his lower half, upper half. And like no matter whether he's coming off a screen, um, he's curling, he's uh, standstill, like it's, it's always the same. Um, and so like no matter where he was out on the floor, whether it was in the corner on those baseline out of bounds or whether it was above the break, uh, whether like off a spot up attempt, he, it was always the same form. Um, and so I think that obviously translates to success. And at the same time, like he's kind of like Max in the sense that it feels like he never sees a defender. Like even though he's six eight, six nine, he's always able to find a way to rise up over guys without it. Like he doesn't see the contest. Um, he's just always super confident in his shot. And uh, that's just stuck out to me. And he's like, no matter if he's, he seems like a guy who's like, no matter if he's 0 for 10 or 7 for 7, um, it's always going to be the same thing every time and in a good sense. Yeah, it's like Duncan Robinson movement with some Max right. Struess mindset. Uh, and that is, it's an interesting 13 minutes, 17 points, five of nine from the field, five of nine from three. So that's all he doing. Uh, had a couple boards, got to the line, made both free throws, just a bucket getter, right? And um, Eternal, they need shooting. Duncan was 0 for 6 tonight. I don't know what we should make of that. Probably not a ton because it is preseason, but it was nice to see another guy step up. We haven't talked a lot about uh, Nico Jovic. Um, so I do want to also give you the opportunity to talk about him as well. But overall, uh, Swider, Jovic, wh what were your highlights from those two guys uh, that maybe we haven't touched on? Um. Well, I think I mean I, I don't think it's fair to really talk about Yovic. I mean, he didn't really play much tonight. Um, we still haven't heard anything as far as why he wasn't available for the second half. Um, but I think you know for the stuff that he you know was on the court for, uh, you know, showed some poise. Um, he got a I think I think he got one assist or something like that. Uh, but it was a breakdown um, attacking a, a, a closeout and kicking it out for Kyle for a three um, and. You know, uh, getting, I think, an easy putback or something like that. But Cole, man, he's everything that was advertised, everything that we heard, um, you know, from insider sources, everything that we heard from just, you know, just to talk around camp. Um, when Bam was asked, who was like the most impressive young guy, uh, he answered Cole Squatter. And I think um, that was just, I mean, he came in to the fourth quarter, didn't play <laughs> like, any other minute came in the fourth quarter and got 17 points. Um, was getting them up. Uh, and I think also who also was like uh really impressive was Thomas Bryant. Yeah. Um, you know, my biggest concern with Thomas Bryant was his defense, and I think he played the drop really well. Matt mentioned that early on playback. Um, you know, I think also he he got a block shot in a full court pass. To Josh Richardson, I think that to me was the highlight of the night. It was. That was a great play with that. Dunk. <laughs> it was a great play. Um, he showed a lot of great activity uh, around the rim as far as defensively, um, just being active and boxing out and things of that nature. So uh, I think Cole Swider was everything is, is advertised, and I think Thomas Bryant uh, showed us some some encouraging uh, glimpses for backup five to Bam. Agree. And Orlando Robinson came in and went right to work, getting up as many shots as he possibly could in 14 minutes, got up nine shots uh, and a couple threes was positive minutes. Um, two players, Alex Haywood Highsmith and Drew Smith. And I don't want to end the podcast on a bad note, but we need to, we're going to, we're going to go there. Um, Haywood Highsmith to me looked like the guy who nobody's really going to like, remember how he played tonight. But that's the kind of stuff I think you're going to be able to see from him all season. Uh, am I overreacting, or do you think that that's probably the right projection for Haywood Highsmith? And then Drew Smith, he just couldn't he couldn't shoot. He turned the ball over a ton. I guess he got the ball back more than he turned it over. But your thoughts on the fact that Drew Smith was kind of given the first shot at young point guard on the rise on the roster – and didn't have a great showing how much should we read into it um interested on on both of those guys from your perspective so um for drew smith i mean it's clear that they like him not, not only because they kept you know bringing him back and then you know as everybody knows spo was talking him up at training camp did it a couple of times um 
And like we mentioned on playback, sorry for, you know, sounding like a broken record with that. We just, we talked about some of this stuff so much already. So, you know, I recommend you guys check that out, uh, playback.tv slash 5RSN. But another guy, um, you know, in the heat's mold of end of rotations, or excuse me, end of roster point guard, where it's like, you know, this guy can defend. He's got some stuff on defense, but the offense is, is a concern right and they're not all the same players but they feel like they're all more or less in that mold and i feel like rj hampton is kind of in that mold too because the 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 difference is hampton kind of came up as a big name and so he was thought to have more um you know of of a scoring arsenal but i think right now you know hampton is basically trying to uh fit into a role right and and into that kind of you know defensive hound and you know, we heard a lot of stuff about him being the guy who led camp in deflections and steals, and that's what Drew was doing tonight. Drew Smith looked great on the defensive end and, and was making stuff happen there. Uh, offensively, it was just wonky, and I think that's going to be the the thing is, like, are either of their point guards, their, their two-way point guards, ready to get minutes? And I, I think that's going to be a question because – um, they don't need any, they don't need one of those guys to step up into it right now, but it's, it's more like for, you know, nights when they have injuries, if Kyle's out, if Tyler's out for those types of things, that's when we'll see them. But, um, I think that's right. That's why right now it's just like, you know, Kyle is important still because he's going to be somebody who can, uh, you know, bring up these bench units. Cause I just don't think, uh, like the, these types of point guards that the heat bring on are not necessarily lead guards, especially these right. end of roster ones. It's like these combo guards who are there to play a role and so smith and hampton are not like bring up the ball and get you into your offense type guards but they can do it a little bit here and there and i guess i mean with high smith high smith is a different story man like i don't really have to see much from him and I, I i almost put him in the same category with some of these other like rotation players caleb jimmy bam tyler kyle like just these guys who i already know what i'm gonna see for them and and yeah like seeing like uh, Tyler and Josh play together is important. But again, like most of these guys, I already know what they're going to bring me. Very you know, true. Um, and Highsmith, as far as I'm concerned, has already earned that rotation spot. Because like I was mentioning tonight, like, oh, a fun bench unit would be Kyle, Duncan, Caleb, Hakez, and Jovic. Like that would be probably the most fun outcome. But I already know Highsmith is going to be in there somewhere. And he has to be. Like the guy is, like, has, has played some incredible defense. And I think he's shown growth. Uh, as a cutter and mover and and just is he's pretty perfect for the role that they need from him so i think he's going to be in there somewhere and and you know that's just kind of where i'm at with him like i I would be shocked if he wasn't in the rotation to to start the season wholeheartedly agree haywood highsmith will be in the rotation um i think that the point guard situation is precarious and we just need to acknowledge that it doesn't mean that they can't get by. It doesn't mean that they can't manufacture offense. It doesn't mean that they can't bring the ball up the court. I think that they can find capable ways of doing that stuff, but I don't know that it is a um, long-lasting formula to go with the point guards that are on this roster and the guys that can get you into offense and get you organized long-term. Um, you know, Ethan went as far as to say this may be the worst group of point guards that the Heat's ever had on a roster. I would need to do some historical research to confirm that. But I do know that when I uh, went over the, in the Riley era, all the starting point guards that they've ever had, if Kyle Lowry is the starter on game one, he will be one of the, um, I guess, players that uh, – just from a statistical perspective will be one of the least productive if we just look at what he's done recently. So hopefully they'll figure that position out. I do not want to put a, a end this podcast on a bad note. So final thoughts from everyone on the night. I obviously think that there was a ton of good things to, to take from this game because it appears the heat is deep. They may have some shooting replenished. So these are key points we were looking to see. And in game one, some of it we saw, uh, so around the room quickly, Matt, final thoughts, eternal final thoughts, Alex, anything jump in here and then we close out. Was that the most fun preseason game y'all have seen in some time from the Miami heat? Like that was a lot of fun. Let's just, yeah, come on. It was. Not- and it was yeah, close. Absolutely. Yeah. I had a great time. Let's do, let's do more preseason games like that. That was fun. In fact, yep. so far the NBA preseason in general has been pretty fun, especially with the, the Wemby Chet Holmgren, 
uh, matchup the other night. There's been a couple other matchups and good performances out there. So, um, so yes, the NBA is back. We are back uh, with post game additions. Check out A Aggressive Insurance, Rock Esports Center. Have a good night. Peace out.